Hello. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Enrique Caballero. Uh, I'm uh, the sales director for AWARE, uh, based in Vienna and uh, looking after the EBA region. Uh, the topic today is about uh, why we, biometrics is important within the banking industry. So I'm going to present what we are doing in the, in the field. I'm going to present as well about uh, who we are, what we do, uh, just to give you the confidence that biometric is something that you can implement within your day-to-day -day business, right? Uh, so we have a long experience on the biometrics. So we, uh, we are a company that is around 30 years old co uh, of experience. We start working actually with the FBI. Uh, the FBI, they want to reduce the size of the fingerprint because it was too big, right? So they need to send this to the backend system to verify that the person that is in front of the readers is a suspect or not. So this is how we started the journey 30 years ago. And then uh, this has been evolving, right, within the time. So we have, uh, you see some of our uh, references. Uh, Itaú is the largest bank in Brazil. Uh, they have around 30 million of users. They are already using the face liveness and the face matching uh, in, the, in the mobile app and also the document authentication, right? So you're going to hear me talking about these topics a lot and a lot, but this is just to give you the certainty that this is something that is already proof. Citibank as well in the US, they are already using uh, the face biometrics for a long time as well. It's coming from us. Uh, Guarantee Bank, BBVA, this is part of a large uh, Spanish group, uh, the BBVA group. Uh, they have this brand in Turkey, and they are also using uh, part of our technology. You can see also at the bottom um, here, some of the other references that we have is the Bundesnet Criminal Amt. In Germany, they are using uh, the full uh, range of myometrics modalities. The UK Home Office. The UK is a very funny country because they don't have an ID. So they need to authenticate the persons when they want to open a bank account remotely. So they use the face. Uh, so they are also using this. When happened Brexit, uh, all the people that they were from the, from the Europe, uh, from the continent, and they need to verify also the identity remotely. So they need to put the passport behind of the reader and then authenticate the face using the biometrics, right? So just this is just to give you the certainty what we are doing already into the market. This is a good example as well. Uh, I was reading the news uh, a couple of months ago. It was a person uh, based in Europe, uh, and he was creating fake documents, right? And uh, he was using Brad Pitt <laughs> as his example, right? So he used the photo of Brad Pitt, and then he started creating the documents. Uh, when the police catch them, so they were really amazed of the quality of the documents. He was doing this at home but he was really good doing it, right? So 25 different documents with Brad Pitt, IDs, uh, passports, driving licenses, but he was using this to, uh, uh, to smuggle people, right, across the European Union. So I'm just wondering what will happen if he's using this technology to go to the brand and open a bank account, right? Because what you normally do when you open a bank account, so you put the passport, and then there is the person in front, and then you just check, right, remotely. Yeah, you say, oh, this is the same person. Off you go, you sign the document. But there is something, you guys you talk about artificial intelligence. We are using artificial intelligence. It's a black box as well. So this is what is happening in the background. There are some futures in the document that we as a human beings, we are not able to identify, right? But the artificial intelligence and the machine learning, they are really clever, and they are able to identify that this is a fake document. So this is just to give you an example of uh, what is happening now and how the bad guys or bad hombres, like they say in the US, they are using the technology uh, to, do, uh, to do fake things, right? Uh, this is just a, a trend, right? So what happened before COVID and after COVID, uh, this accelerates the, uh, the adoption of biometrics, right? Because when we have COVID before, we were talking about biometrics for a long time already, right? So because I've been in this industry for quite some years, uh, we were talking about biometrics with the banks, with the mobile network operators, with the governments as well. When COVID happens, this accelerates, right? The process of adoptions of opening bank accounts remotely. In the European Union, um, the main issue is the GDPR, right? 
but I'm, you don't need to be worried. Uh, there is a standardization already, so there is something that is already written, so you can make the deployment uh, according to the GDPR. EIDAS is coming as well. They are talking about uh, how you need to do all the processes for remote onboarding, so this is something that we can do as well, right? But this is important to highlight, right? 56% uh, 50, of the Europeans, they've been uh, victims of uh, digital identity theft, right? Uh, I count myself, I've been uh, once hacked, even if I'm in this uh, industry, not in the Euro European Union, somewhere else, uh, a person hacked my, my account and they were doing a couple of transactions using my, my name, uh, even if I'm, uh, well, I, I think I'm in the industry, I'm not savvy, but I'm part of the, the digital identity industry, right? So, but this is something that is happening, so, the digital identity and the biometrics is really helping all of this to reduce the fraud and to have the certainty that this is a secure uh, process when you do the digital onboarding. So, uh, which are the boxes that you need to check uh, when you are uh, doing the biometrics, right? It's not only about biometrics, it's a complete framework. So the first of, of this is the mobile authentication framework, right? So which kind of uh, apps you need to incorporate to create uh, a bank account remotely. Um, we see the trend now uh, that the banks, they are asking to the customers to open the bank account, sending a link. So you don't need to ask the customer to download an app. So you just need to send the link and then you can do the onboarding remotely, right? So you can use the web services. This is something that is already available as well for quite some time. Uh, so you don't need to use the app and ask the customer, can you download the app and then do the, uh, the digital onboarding, right? So this is the one, the first box that you need to tick. Uh, and then check which biometrics modalities, when modalities uh, is referring about face or voice, or also behavioral biometrics. This is also available as well. Uh, so you need to check which kind of biometric uh, modality you're going to use. If you want to enhance the security, you can combine face plus voice, right? So if there is a, a crypto company that we are working with. They want to use uh, a very high uh, authentication uh, security because they are doing, you know, the cryptos, they are uh, quite something. If you, make a transfer of 100 uh, Bitcoin, so it's, it's quite something. So they need to request the face and also the, the voice, right, to make, the, to make sure that this is the same person. And also we make the uh, GPR uh, location. So we need to be sure that the person is located in the country where he's claiming to be. The third one is the compliance, right? So you need to be sure that you are compliant with the regulation. As I say, in the European Union, uh, is the GDPR. EIDAS is coming, it's not finalized yet, but it's something that you need to be sure that you are compliant with this. Uh, for biometrics, the main thing is that you capture the face, you capture the document, and then you delete information from the document after you verify the identity of this individual, right? So this is something that you need to, to do as well. Uh, but this is also available. On the EIDAS, it's about the processes. So it doesn't mean uh, to check where you are doing the transactions or anything. They are just doing the audit of the whole processing, right? Uh, the, the other one is the passive lightness, right? So I have a couple of uh, spoof attempts here. So you're going to see this. You, you like football, so you recognize this. You see a lot of attempts, right? The spoof attempts for, for instance, a person who wants to impersonate, so they just wear the mask. And then they try to get access, but uh, so our system, is, well, this, in general, the, the industry is doing this verification. Also, they say, what about if I print a, a paper photograph, right, of someone? So if I try to get access to the system using a paper photograph of me, we're going to say, yes, the person is matching, it's the same, you know, even wearing a football uh, shirt, but it's not the same, so it's not alive. So the system is able to verify that the person is not real. We have a couple of questions as well. What about if we use a uh, 8K uh, screen, right? It's the same, so the system is able, well, it's really clever based on the artificial intelligence uh, that the person is not, uh, is not alive. It's the same with voice, voice biometrics, exactly the same. So you do all the uh, verification of the liveness of the voice. Uh, 
Uh, in the banking industry, this is something that is already deployed. So uh, when you want to onboard a new client, uh, you onboard the person with the voice only with three seconds. And then when the person is calling to the bank again, to the call center, uh, you are doing the continuous authentication just to check that the person is the one who is claiming to be, as so initially they on board. And then within the call, there is no one that is uh, talking on the behalf of this customer. So this is something uh, that we also do, right, uh, as part of the framework. Uh, this means that this is a frictionless uh, user experience, right? So you have all these different boxes. So it's easy, honestly, if you want to open a bank account now, it's going to take you with the biometric framework uh, less than three minutes. Uh, if you want to open the bank account, you need to go to the branch, uh, you need to take half an hour going and coming back, wait for the person in front. And if you are the person who creates <laughs> The identity is like Brad Pitt, so who knows, right? So who, who knows if this is a real document? This is already secure with the framework that we have. And the last one is the document verification. This is the, uh, one of the key elements for the whole framework. Uh, overall, we support around 11,000 different documents from all over the world. In Europe, we have a lot of people coming from different countries. Uh, the passport sometimes is written uh, in different alphabets, in Arab or in Russian or in uh, Chinese. So th the framework is able also to verify that this is written in different language, make the translation, and then it's checking all the different futures. If uh, you are good as, as the guy who make the the Brad Pitt ID, so the, the system is also able to verify that this is a fake document, right? Something that we cannot recognize as a, as a human being, right? I, I'm going to tell you one, uh, one story. Once I, I was in the airport, in one of the airports in, in, in Europe, um, and there was one person in front of me, and the police, they stopped them, right? Because they were checking the passport and the person. And then they came another guy and uh, another security officer. So they came around three different people. And I was anxious, right, because I want to pass the security. I, I just want to go. So I say, ah, oh, uh, maybe can I help you? Why you don't use my, uh, my, my app, right? So just to check that the person that you have in front is the same as the one who is claiming to be with the passport. And they say, OK. So they check it, and they realize, oh, yes, it's the same person. We make a couple of uh, tests within there just to be sure that uh, I'm not supporting this guy. But it's, it was actually the same person. The difference is that he lost some weight, and also he uh, shaved the beard, right? So uh, I opened a business opportunity there because the officer, he, he asked me, can you give me your business card? I said, yes, no problem. So I give the business card. But this is also another of the elements where we are working on the border control. So it's exactly the same security as you have, right? Um, so yes, yeah, so this is just to uh, summarize everything. So. If you are looking for a solution, a biometric solution, don't only look for the biometrics, so you need to look for the whole framework. So you need to think if you are going to use face and or voice, uh, you need to check if this is a GDPR compliant. You need to check also the liveness. Uh, the liveness, remember this photograph, uh, that the person is real and uh, is not uh, fake or using different kind of uh, impersonations. Uh, the certification is called iBeta, uh, level one and level two. Uh, also, you need to check how you're going to deploy this, either on premises or on the cloud. Uh, that largely depends uh, in your IT infrastructure. Uh, and also, how you're going to do the onboarding using the app, or if you want to use this through a web server, right? So this is something that you need to think about it as well. Uh, and also, which kind of documents you're going to verify when you do the authentication, the initial onboarding, when you uh, ask the customer, prove me that you are Enrique, prove me that you are Olena, or prove me whoever you are to be, and then you do the document authentication, and then the face matching and the liveness, right? So that's all for me, and um, thank you very much. <laughs>